morning students today i will discuss something on vertebra once again because i already posted one video on vertebra uh, how to identify the different structure of a vertebra how to hold it in anatomical position that part i already told you in previous video but today i will discuss on individual vertebra you know there are five types of vertebra cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal vertebra and seven cervical 12 thoracic five lumbar and five sacral vertebra fuse together to form the sacrum and four coccygeal vertebra they are also fused together to form coccyx and today i will discuss on lumbar vertebra you know there are five lumbar vertebra named as lumbar 1 2 3 4 and 5 and all these lumbar vertebra having some common features except one lumbar 1 to lumbar 4 these four vertebra having common features so they are called typical lumbar vertebra and fifth lumbar vertebra this particularly this fifth lumbar vertebra having some special feature so it is called atypical lumbar vertebra i will show you how to differentiate the typical from the atypical lumbar vertebra but before that you have to identify the lumbar vertebra first of all that means it is not thoracic it is not cervical you have to confirm if i pick this one this vertebra and can you see in this vertebra in the transverse process there are a foramen on either side this foramen is called foramen transversarium this foramen transversarium means it is cervical vertebra but in thoracic vertebra another important feature is the costal facet on the body and also costal facet on the transverse process this one so presence of costal facet means it is for articulation with the ribs so it is thoracic vertebra so in the lumbar vertebra you will get neither the foramen transversarium nor the costal facet so it is lumbar vertebra so now you confirm that it is a lumbar vertebra now let let's discuss the how to differentiate the typical lumbar vertebra from atypical lumbar vertebra lumbar vertebra suppose this is one lumbar vertebra it is having broad anterior part called body and the remaining part called vertebral arch you know and among the different parts of the vertebral arch this is the pedicle then this is lamina of both sides this is spine or spinous process two superior articular process two inferior articular process and two transverse process one on either side and this is vertebral notch superior one and this is vertebral notch inferior one above and below the pedicle and this big foramen is vertebral foramen in addition to all these features a lumbar vertebra has two additional features and one of them is mammillary process and another one is accessory process mammillary process it is present on the posterior border of superior articular process as an elevation and accessory process is a small tubercle at the root of the transverse process so what are the common features common features of a lumbar vertebra is this vertebral body this is the vertebral body and it looks like a kidney shaped if i hold like this hold like this it looks like a kidney this is the hilar hilum part or medial border of the kidney so this looks like kidney shaped and this foramen it is triangular and roomy because it contains the spinal cord and there is one enlargement at this lumbar level for lumbar enlargement so to accommodate this swelling of the lumbar uh, swelling of the spinal cord or enlargement of the spinal cord this foramen should be roomy and bigger one so this foramen is triangular and it is spacious so in a lumbar vertebra there is a kidney shaped body and no foramen transversarium like that of cervical vertebra no costal facet like that of 
thoracic vertebra and it is having all the features of a vertebra in general and in addition there are two process mammillary process and accessory process. And to differentiate it from the artificial or fifth lumbar vertebra, if I take one fifth lumbar vertebra then it will be easier for you to differentiate. First of all you just closely observe these two vertebra. I will tell you two important points. By these two points you can identify very easily the typical from the artificial. This is pedicle, this one is pedicle and this is transverse process. Here also pedicle is there and transverse process also there. But can you see the difference? Here you see the transverse process it is arising from the junction of pedicle and lamina and it is pointed. But here this pedicle it encroaching on the body and transverse process also it is going onto the body and it is stout. So, difference is that transverse process pointed and arising from the junction of pedicle and lamina, but here the transverse process and pedicle they are encroaching on the sides of the body of that vertebra. This is number one. Number two, if we observe the superior articular process of both sides, both sides, this is the distance between the two superior articular process. Here is the distance between two inferior articular process. But this distance is more than this distance. That means the distance between the superior articular process is more than the distance between the two inferior articular process in case of typical lumbar vertebra. But you closely observe the distance. If I measure the distance between the two superior articular process, and the distance between two inferior articular process, the distance of this one and this one more or less equal. In contrast to this one, this is equal distance, it is unequal distance. So, this is typical, this is atypical. So, by these two points, what are the points? One is the transverse process and pedicle it is onto the body and it is stout and the distance of the superior articular process and inferior articular process they are more or less equal. So, this is fifth lumbar vertebra or atypical lumbar vertebra. Now we know and the some important attachment may be asked in the examination on the body in the midline there is one ligament that is called anterior longitudinal ligament. This is not only for the lumbar vertebra throughout the body in front of the all lumbar vertebra, thoracic vertebra, cervical vertebra up to the sacral one you will get one longitudinal ligament is there in front of the vertebral body. This is called anterior longitudinal ligament. Similarly, on the posterior surface of the body there is another ligament placed longitudinally that is called posterior longitudinal ligament. This is common to all vertebra, all means thoracic, cervical, lumbar up to the sacral one, not beyond that. And the transverse process of a lumbar vertebra on its anterior surface there is a ridge, there is a ridge on the anterior surface. And medial to this ridge is the attachment of psoas major. Here is a attachment of psoas major muscle. And lateral to this ridge, there is attachment of another muscle here that is quadratus lamborum. And in between these two muscles, there is a ridge. The ridge for the attachment of anterior layer of thoracolumbar fossa and here 
from the tip of transverse process is the attachment of middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia. And for the upper three lumbar vertebra, suppose this is the lumbar 1, lumbar 2 and lumbar 3, on each side from the body there is attachment one muscle, upper border, lower border, upper border, lower border of all these vertebra including their intervertebral disc attachment of one muscle that is called right cross of the diaphragm. But for the left side only lumbar 1 and lumbar 2 on this lateral side of the body is the attachment of left cross of the diaphragm. So, right cross 3 lumbar vertebra lumbar 1 to 3 and left cross lumbar 1 and lumbar 2 not 3 it is smaller than the right one. And they are the all spines tip of the spines all the spines are broad and quadrilateral like this and extending more or less horizontally backward. Tip of the spines they are interarticulated by a ligament called supraspinous ligament. Here, supraspinous ligament like this, supraspinous ligament. And the upper border of the spine and lower border of the spine attachment of one, another ligament called interspinous ligament. And lamina to lamina. This lower border of lamina of the upper vertebra and upper border of lamina of the lower vertebra, they are interconnected by ligamentum flava. So, this is another ligament, ligamentum flava between the lamina of upper vertebra and lamina of the lower vertebra. And <coughs> between the bodies of the vertebra, there is one intervertebral disc. This is the position of intervertebral disc. If you see this intervertebral disc here is a disc, it is having two parts, outer part and central part. The central part here the red colored chalk is there to identify the central part which is called nucleus pulposus. This nucleus pulposus is a derivative of notochord and it is developed from ectoderm and the surrounding peripheral larger part it is a fibrocartilage it is called annulus fibrosus so annulus fibrosus it is a <coughs> it is mesodermal in development this is ectodermal nucleus pulposus and this is mesodermal annulus fibrosus so this intervertebral disc you will get throughout the vertebral column and if you see the total length of the vertebral column is 60 centimeter or 70 centimeter but the length of the intervertebral disc accounts for one fourth of the total length of the vertebral column. So, if the length of vertebral column is 60 centimeter the length for the intervertebral disc will be 15 centimeter that means one fourth of the total length and it is very frequently asked in the examination what is intervertebral disc and what are its components and what are their embryological source. So now it is clear to you that the intervertebral disc it is a disc which is present between the bodies of the vertebra and it is having a central part and one peripheral part central part nucleus pulposus derived from the ectoderm and it is a remnant of notochord and peripheral part is the mesodermal in development it is a fibrocartilage and it is called annulus fibrosus. So, I think uh, it is all for you to identify the lumbar vertebra and to classify it into typical and atypical work. So, that is all for today for the lumbar vertebra next video I will show you how to identify the thoracic vertebra and what are their classification. Thank you very much. Thank you.